Hey everybody and welcome back to Mondays with me, Dr. Crystal, and today with me, Dr. Heather. Today is a very special Mondays with Dr. Crystal. So what's going on, Dr. Heather? We have a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Ooh, for what? To have a baby. We want to have a baby. Crystal's going to have that baby fever, not doctor fever. <laughs> no, Heather's got baby fever. I do? I feel like yes. You keep talking about wanting to put a baby in me. That's because we have an appointment to put a, <laughs> literally put a baby in you. Anyways, obviously we are very excited about this and we wanted to share this journey with you guys in hopes that, well one, hopefully you find it interesting and two, hopefully to, to help other people who are maybe in the same position because we gay and we want a baby and that's harder than for <laughs> straight couples. Not all straight couples. Obviously there's like tons of um, different fertility journeys, but this is our fertility journey. Welcome. It starts tomorrow and we will tell you more after this. We put in a baby in there, put in a baby in there, in there, in there. She's gonna birth it out, but first we gotta put it in there. So I think it's nice that we know a little bit more than the average person because like as physicians, we know a little bit about fertility and how it works. Did you do a, a REI rotation? So REI stands for reproductive endocrine infertility. And so I did a rotation in med school and I thought it was super awesome. It almost made me want to go into ob -Gyne. I think I had a week or two and I really liked it too. It was so cool. Like, I mean, obviously... In a, in a specialty like that, there's, like, a lot of sadness and, like, frustration. People trying to get pregnant. But, like, when they finally do get the family that they've been wanting, it's it's amazing. It's really cool to be a part of that. Yeah. I'm excited. Me too. I'm excited to be with you. So, I mean, e even though we know more than, like, an average person, I feel like we still have a lot of questions. And so yeah. we are anxious to get to the appointment tomorrow. We just wanted to tell you a little bit about the things that we have already discussed and decided on and the things that we have questions about that we will hopefully learn after the visit. Because of COVID, we are having our first appointment virtual. It's tomorrow during our lunch breaks. Yeah, so we, we both obviously have a little bit of a harder time taking time off work. We have patients we have to see. And so, yeah, we'll do it right in the middle of the day. Yeah, it's kind of weird because we won't be together. Like. You'll be at work again. I want to hold your hand. I know. I know. It is kind of weird, but at least we don't have to take a day off for this appointment, which is nice because yeah. we anticipate this being a journey. And so we probably will have to take multiple days off of work. I, I'm, how do you feel? I'm, I'm excited and, and nervous mm -hmm. and like butterflies. Yeah, I think so. So things that we've already decided. So, um, I, obviously somebody has to carry the baby whether it be one of us or somebody else. And so initially we thought that maybe we would both take turns carrying a baby. And then as we talked about it more, we kind of realized that, it, well, I realized it was- I was about to say. <laughs> why don't you tell them what I realized? You realized that you ultimately would prefer not to carry a baby if you don't have to. Right. And you keep your body pristine. <laughs> And since I wanted to have a baby, and I was open to having, then I was open to having both babies. Yeah, so that's that's what we're gonna do. Hopefully, if we are lucky enough to be able to get pregnant and have children, and our plan goes as planned, then we're hoping to have two babies, and Heather will carry them both. Don't worry, guys. I made a promise to still love me after I get pregnant and my body changes with pregnancy. Even and I, her body is going to remain perfect and never pregnant. I will love every... Hopefully, because that means things went well with me. I will love every stretch mark because it means that you made our family. And I will be very, very, very grateful and happy about that. And I think you're beautiful, no matter what. She's tearing up. No, I'm not. I, I think this is better. She would have gotten extra emotional oh throughout God. pregnancy. 
<laughs> I'm literally not tearing up, though. I'm actually surprised, like I usually do tear up. <laughs> Anyways, so then the other question is, so for to make a baby, you need a sperm and an egg. Both of us have eggs. And so we, we need a sperm to make our children. And so if all goes well, we hope to have one child using Heather's egg and one child using my egg, and we'd like them to have the same sperm donor. It was kind of uh, a discussion whether or not we would want to use somebody we knew or use a sperm bank. I mean, at first we were thinking we would want to use somebody we knew. We like the idea of knowing that person, knowing their good qualities, even knowing their bad qualities, and we were okay with that, and... Yeah. Like personality, yeah. and that kind of stuff. Um, and just what type of person they are. Just like, no, kind of knowing their families, and like where they come from, and their, like really knowing their values, not just reading them on paper. The idea of having a known commodity, and like in our future baby. And we kind of even, I think, we're hoping for someone that would almost like compliment who we are as people and like fit into that relationship. But ultimately. Yeah. So we were leaning that way for a really long time, but as reality kind of got closer, we started thinking about how it could potentially affect our relationship with these people who we clearly think very highly of. And even if they decided that it was okay for us to use their sperm and they thought that it would be a good idea and they were excited about it. We never know what would happen in the future. Like, would it be awkward once we have children and, you know, there are people that we still want in our lives and would we, would it get weird or I don't know. So in the end, would it get weird with us or with them or with the baby and right. And like, and then like when we have a child, like seeing those, act those qualities that we loved, but like seeing those and being like, Oh, that reminds us of whoever, the sperm donor, when we want it to remind us of just our child and see yeah. us in them. Our family. So in the end, we decided we will go with a sperm donor. So we were kind of waiting for a doctor's appointment tomorrow because we want to know what sperm bank our doctor recommends or prefers working with. And after we find that out, we will hopefully go on and find a donor that we think will, will fit well with what we're looking for. Yeah. I'm excited. Me too. I'm nervous. I'm nervous to pick like I who know. is gonna donate the genetic material for like our our family, yeah. like it's our children. It's not a decision that we want to take lightly. Right. But also I don't want to think twice after we do pick it. Yeah. What questions do you have for tomorrow? We actually we probably should have talked about this before <laughs> now, but but what questions do you have? Because I have a couple, but I would like a timeline of just how how things are kind of laid out throughout this process just to get a sense of what to expect right like are we going to be trying to get you pregnant like next month or is it going to be like three months from now that'd be good to know I think my biggest question is whether or not it makes sense for you to like for us to use your egg first and maybe try um IUI which is um, intrauterine insemination so they would just like put the sperm when she's ovulating or if it makes more sense for us to like use my eggs first or if maybe she thinks like we should freeze my eggs now I I'm interested to hear what she says about yeah. that and I, I have a feeling it's the answer is going to be like you do your egg first just because what if for some reason you can't get pregnant or like your, you know, your uterus isn't accepting the embryo or. Yeah, that's definitely, those are definitely good questions. Another question I have is that I want to know the cost of several of these procedures and things that we're looking at as far as options go. Yeah, like the, the cost of these procedures is like seems fairly similar from what I've heard. We've have we've had friends go through infertility struggles and so I think it's like fairly similar across the board, but every clinic I think is a little bit different. And and if you don't know, most insurances do not cover these kinds of treatments and so the cost is out of pocket. So that is a big concern. Like if this takes multiple cycles and you know we have to try IUI a bunch of times and you know IVF a bunch of times it can add up very quickly. I think what you said at first, like the the timeline is the biggest thing that I'm I'm wondering about too. Like 
it makes me nervous thinking about like trying to do this really soon but like because it's always seemed like a far in the future type thing i know yeah so i guess another thing to answer for you guys is like how we how we knew the time was right and i don't know <laughs> in my head within the last year or two was always thinking we at least want to be living in the same town and same house right that's for, ideal for <laughs> six months or that was like just a number i had thrown out um to you know make sure it's going well and we're like doing <laughs> making sure she, <laughs> she could handle actually living with me and like wasn't gonna run away but, um, and just to like just focus on us yeah spend some time like just yeah. the two of us because we had been what? doing long distance for so long yeah prior for if you're new here we were in a long distance relationship for a long time just in our medical training quarantine has given us a lot more time to think about it too and seeing our friends starting families we're both 32 right now so we're like hitting that age where it's like biological clock is starting to tick and if we want a couple we can hear it ticking <laughs> i literally like hear it ticking in my head like i wish i could just like freeze time for a little bit and not age but uh before 30 i couldn't hear it <laughs> <laughs> i don't know everyone says like the timing is never going to be perfect and and i agree with that like we're busy in our careers we are doing things all the time we're in normal in normal life we're traveling all the time and doing stuff and so we know we want to have a family so now just seems like the time and so we're yeah, gonna go we're ready. for it uh, i don't know about ready but we ready can do it ready is a loose we, term we can do it we can do it <laughs> are you ready to be mommies yes i am <laughs> i love you i love you too we're gonna have our visit tomorrow and we will update you guys in another video on how that goes and what the plan is and, and where we go from here. But we're excited. We hope you are too. We hope that you enjoy coming along on this journey with us. We will try to, to update you as the steps go on. And if you have any stories about a getting pregnant journey that you'd like to share with us, please comment down below. We'd love to hear. And yeah. any tips or I was going to say too. advice yeah. would be great. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Let's make a baby. Let's do it. We hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you next, next time. time. We're going to make a baby. Put a baby in your belly. Put a little baby in, in my your belly. belly. In my belly. Not in your belly, though. That would be in that topic pregnancy. We'll put it in my uterus. 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 <laughs>